everyone. Welcome back to another week on the Rush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on this little piece behind me and it has slowly become what might be, I don't know, dare I say one of my favorite finishes. Uh, I really love these colors together. It's a piece using my new collection from Daydream Apothecary, the Cozy Home Collection from Brush by Brandy. Um, the inspiration from this piece originally started with a piece of paper and so we're going to be applying some paper to the inside of this. This is from Roy Cycle. This is one of her decoupage papers. And that was kind of the inspiration for all of these finishes, but they really came together. The colors are stunning. Um, I'm not quite done with it yet, so don't take this as the final result, but we're gonna be doing some decoupage. We're gonna be doing some stencil using a new product uh, called Icing Paste from Redesign with Prima. Of course, some of my new colors um, in this really soft blend. I'm gonna show you how the Daydream Apothecary colors uh, work together. Um, all of the collections work together with each other, including my collection. So I think it's just a really fun piece. I love how it came out. It's a really unique piece uh, to begin with. So I'm excited to share this with you. You guys stick around and let's get started. Here's where I started on this piece. It's actually really cool. It's a little bar cabinet. When you open it up, it has bar storage. And bonus, I found some shot glasses inside. So I didn't end up keeping those, but it's one of the cooler, funnier things that I found in a piece. Speaking of things you guys find in pieces, I'm curious to know what you guys have found in your furniture pieces. So in the comment section, drop me some comments. Let me know some of the cool things you found in furniture. Moving along, let's go ahead and get this piece ready for some paint. So this is made by Bombay and Company and Bombay and Company pieces are traditionally known for being really, really slick pieces. So I used my surf prep sander and I gave this an overall scuff sanding on the entire body of the piece. Then I'm gonna go ahead and clean it really well. I removed all my hardware and put that to be cleaned. I cleaned this really well and it's ready for some paint. Once I had this piece scuff sanded, I felt like it was ready for some paint. I'm not gonna put primer on this one. Um, the Daydream Apothecary paint that I'm using is going to stick well to the scuff sanded surface. Ignore the colors that I already had on this piece. I used it on a live and I was just showing some sample colors, but they're not gonna be part of my overall finish. The colors that I'm using from Daydream Apothecary are two colors from the Brush by Brandy Cozy Home Collection, and that is Metropolis, which is this deep charcoal blue gray, and then I'm using Rope Swing, which is a soft gray, and I'm mixing them with Deadly Nightshade from the Botanical Collection. It was important that the colors in my collection, the Cozy Home Collection, be able to coordinate with the other uh, colors in the line from Daydream Apothecary. And I chose fairly muted shades, but I think this piece is a kind of important lesson in colors. And it shows that you can take kind of bright colors and mix them with more muted shades and it kind of tones them down a little bit. It grounds them a little. So I'm using my colors for shading to go around the Deadly Night shade and I love how they combine with each other. For my soft blend on this piece, I'm using the Metropolis around the outer edges of each door panel. And then I'm gonna line just inside of that with the Deadly Night shade. And in the very center, I'm just gonna add a subtle highlight with that light gray, which is called Rope Swing. What I'm working on here is just my base coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanna get my color layout right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two coats of blended paint on this. The reason I blend both of my coats is because I find that laying the blended colors on top of each other makes the colors more rich and saturated. I need to let this base coat dry at least overnight. One cool thing about the Daydream Apothecary paint is that it does have the ability to reconstitute fairly easily, and that's great when you wanna do layering or any kind of distressing on the piece. But for mine, I wanna do some blending. So I know that I need to work my second coat of paint over top. So I need to make sure my base coat is nice and dry before I can do that. Let's go ahead and finish up this base coat all the way around this piece and then we'll let it dry overnight. I'll come back and we'll do the second coat.
All right, we're just about done with that second coat. I've got two blended coats around the body of this piece. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pay attention to the inside. If you remember from my intro, the colors on this piece were kind of inspired by a decoupage paper. And I usually do that when I'm looking for inspiration, I'll look to a product that I have and see if I can find one that kind of inspires me. The same scuff sanding that I gave to the body before I worked on it, I need to give to the inside of this piece. This is just gonna take down that glossy clear coat that's on these Bombay and Company pieces. This is just gonna help the surface to accept my paint better and make sure all my finishes are lasting. I'm also gonna paint just inside the edge of this door so I've got a nice clean line when you open the cabinet. This is a pretty dark paper and I do wanna give my cabinet a base coat of paint. I'm gonna use a fairly dark color of paint because it also ties in with the background of the paper. Um, whatever color you choose to go underneath your paper, it can cast undertones that we'll see, you'll see through. And so I want that to be the darker colors that are also in my paper. I'm gonna lay my paper using a wallpaper paste and this is Roman brand 543 wallpaper paste. I use it quite frequently. I just picked this up at my local Lowe's store. It's really easy and friendly to work with and I'm gonna brush it on using a brush. I can use any brush that I want. It is soap and water cleanup. And then the reason I choose wallpaper paste is because it's got a long, longer open time. You can also use clear coat for decoupage, but I like that the wallpaper paste stays in play for longer so I have a little bit longer to play with my paper. Once I coat the inside of my door with a coat of my wallpaper paste, I'm gonna hold my paper up and I found my inside corner. And now I'm gonna use this decoupage tool that I got from Grace on Design to use it to smooth my paper out. I start at the center of my paper and I'm gonna push it towards the outside edges. This is gonna push all of my excess wallpaper paste to those outside edges. I wanna be careful that I don't get any of that on my tool. I haven't trimmed my paper yet. I'm gonna do that as I get closer to the end. When I get to the shelf at the bottom of this cabinet, I'm gonna trim my paper using my razor knife to fit nicely along that shelf. Recycled papers are a little bit more delicate. They're more of a tissue paper weight, and so I am fairly careful when I'm working with it. You do have a little bit of ability to lift and replace the paper, which I did here in this corner because I felt like I didn't have enough wallpaper paste underneath there. Because this is a more delicate paper, if I wanna rub over the top of it continuously, I need to make sure that I have a barrier in between. So I'm using a piece of parchment paper here and I'm rubbing my decoupage tool over the parchment paper. This makes sure I'm not applying too much friction to the surface of my paper. I felt like there wasn't enough wallpaper paste at the other corner, so I went ahead and added a little bit more there as well. You wanna make sure that you have a feel for your paper when you're doing this. If you feel like it's already attached, don't try to lift it, you will end up tearing it. But because I'm using that wallpaper paste, it, is, it does stay in play for a little bit longer so I can kind of play around with my paper. Once I've got my paper nicely laid, all my bubbles are out, I'm gonna take a sanding block and I'm just gonna run it along the edge of my paper and this trims it right to the edge of my drawer and then I wipe off any excess wallpaper paste. The next thing I wanna to do to go ahead and protect my paper is once it's nice and dry, I'm gonna apply a clear coat over the top. I'm just brushing on the clear coat using a paintbrush. Um, I'm gonna let this dry in between coats and I'm gonna go ahead and apply a few coats of the clear coat to keep it nice and protected and wipeable inside this cabinet. It's gonna be a permanent finish on the inside of this piece. Because I'm reintroducing moisture to the paper, you can notice some little bits of wrinkling when you're applying the clear coat, but if I had it flat when I first applied it, it will re-stretch when it dries um, once this clear coat dries along with it. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a stencil to the outside of this cabinet. And this tile stencil is from Royal Design Studios. And I'm gonna apply it using a sponge. And this is some icing paste from Redesign with Prima. This is a highly metallic paste that's in an acrylic base. So it's self-sealing. There's no need to seal it afterwards. Um, and it's got an incredible shimmer on it. When you hold this up to the light, you can see how it catches all those colors in that metallic. This color is called white gold and I think it's a perfect complement against these dark colors. It really sets it off and then it gives it kind of an aged look. Next, I'm gonna apply some of my icing paste to these outside edges of my cabinet. I did try to do it with my finger, that didn't work so well. So next I came back and tried it with an artist brush and that worked a little bit better. Once my icing paste was dry on the outer edges of my cabinet, I just felt like I wanted it a little more saturated. So I came back with a little bit of white gold gilding wax and I went ahead and put that over the top of the icing paste and that ended up being the look that I was after. Then I'm gonna shade out the inside of these frames using a little bit of black wax. So I'm just taking a little bit of black wax and I'm applying it to the edges of the insides and this is just gonna shadow them a little bit more. It really emphasizes the blended finish that I've already got. 
With all of these steps done, I went ahead and sprayed my entire piece in two coats of clear coat using a paint sprayer, and this one is complete. I love this look, you guys. It's so rich and sophisticated. These colors together, they're exactly what I was after. It couldn't be more perfect for a bar cabinet, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click that subscribe button. You can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. And as always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.